Hey, welcome to the Lex channel. So yesterday I got an interesting uh, uh, image in uh, Facebook. As you can see here, it is in a group. Uh, I'm a programmer. I have no life. <laughs> so there is an interesting uh, image. You can see here. Uh, it's a image where uh, they compare uh, four different constructs in JavaScript and uh, they mention uh, there are different ways to create a function in JavaScript you can see here. So for that uh, I have mentioned uh, saying that uh, just one looks appealing and the rest looks like a garbage and then I mentioned my own views and uh, this is not something uh, rare I have mentioned in many videos uh, about writing code, emphasis of writing code which has more importance uh, in terms of its manageability rather than you know proving all your uh, or expressing all your you know programming skills and making a sort of you know cryptic code and unfortunately whenever you attend even job interviews they ask various puzzles and various questions uh, something where you try to get uh, you know uh, you know output of a you know code which looks cryptic but at the same time you should be able to predict what it can produce. The question is not about what missions takes this code and what it produces the output. The question is more about you write a code so that you know we human beings can interpret and it has that right abstraction and then we should be able to get that overall outcome. Someone mentioned uh, uh, Carlos, uh, he mentioned that uh, I can read all four uh, pretty clear. So once again I kind of uh, counter uh, argued saying that uh, whatever uh, you know um, I would like to say about it. So the question is all about whenever you use a function AP there are different uh, aspects of the same. The, one aspect is as your code gets longer and longer you can think of any repetitive code you can break into you know smaller functions so that it can be called over and over again and then uh, this is what we call as APIs. So, uh, sometimes you may have a module it has certain APIs. So, uh, you may have a device driver it may have APIs like open close uh, read write and stuff like that you may have uh, a proc interface again it may have APIs and you may have some socket code it may have APIs in user space you may call these APIs and then you establish a socket. So whenever you call function APIs it plays a very vital role of abstraction. It's not a question of what that API does all the time. There are two aspects of that. There is an aspect where you write the API, you write the code inside the API and there is also another aspect where uh, they just consume this API and then they kind of get something. Suppose if you have some device driver, you know, there are cases that you may not uh, you know require to write the device driver you just need to consume uh, that you know device driver APIs written by that company suppose you are uh, uh, buying uh, uh, some sound card you are buying some uh, uh, specific uh, hardware the hardware manufacturer uh, will write the device driver uh, code and then he give it, gives it to you and then you take that device driver code and then uh, you try to use it in your applications uh, even in kernel modules even in user space application you take the device driver and you use it for your applications you don't need or you don't have any business of writing again a device driver you are a consumer of that you know APIs and that hardware provided by that supplier. So this is where you need to emphasize you, you have the role of abstracted APIs. How to utilize these abstracted APIs? You don't need to worry about what inside that API happens. You just need to use these APIs in that particular order. If you have some initialization aspects, you initialize the same, you initialize, you will end up initializing the hardware and then you start doing Rx and Tx. I mean to say like read and write and other operations. And then when everything is over, you just do a graceful exit or some close or uninit uninitialization operation and then uh, you gracefully shut down that device or else put it in some kind of you know uh, idle or sleep mode so this is the entire big picture so which is why if you see all these examples 
so here is a situation language doesn't really matter if it is c it will be done in a different way if it is c plus plus it will be done in a different way so it's not a question of which programming language it's a question of the overall approach of you know coding style one have to follow rather than you know putting all their programming skills and then doing some kind of cryptic code the problem with writing any cryptic code is day by day you get older and if you see the same code after 5 10 years you no longer have patience you may have some family you may have some kids you are into something else and then you don't have any more patience so at times you may find your own code difficult to understand you are come out of that you know context of writing code at some point of time maybe you must have done uh, when you started your career because you are very much having that focus and you are very much into that but after uh, you know getting that skills after some years you may lose that and you now focus on bigger things and when you see such cryptic code you you really don't have any clue that what it exactly does and this is where it gets more problematic you may introduce any unknown bugs and in case you have uh, written this code in case you have quit that company in case if somebody is supposed to maintain your code then again it becomes an issue because they may not able to understand uh, what your code does coming back to the point this is where you need to emphasize on uh, manageability and maintainability of the code rather than the actual output the output uh, if you run this in any system maybe the output is going to be the same so you are not writing uh, the code in human readable form uh, <laughs> you know uh, uh, so that only machines will understand you should understand this aspect first uh, let it be in c or some scripting languages if it is written in c c++ so maybe you need to compile the same if you write it in some scripting language uh, like this javascript php perl python something then the interpreter understand so you are not just writing the code so that machines will understand you are writing the code so that you yourself can understand so this is the main point of writing a software uh, uh you know a piece of code or a software so if you don't get this aspect how can you uh, uh, you know become a good uh, you know <laughs> a programmer and how can you you know use your available resources effectively so if you take for instance uh, linux uh, kernel source um, uh, we can uh, browse through couple of uh, apis and then we can discuss the same so if you go through the same uh, you have these apis in uh, skbuff.h uh, you can see here there are couple of apis uh, which looks uh, quite similar skb clone and skb copy there are certain uh, differences between these two apis uh, you can see there uh, it both uh, takes that uh, similar arguments uh, Uh, one with the constant struct and the other one without that constant struct and then uh, both returns uh, uh, you know pointer instance of that skbuff data structure so the question is all about how do you utilize this apis these abstract apis at what situations rather than you focus on what each api uh, internally been imp- implemented or uh, been coded so this is where you have this context of using this apis as a consumer versus you design this api so this is the entire objective of using apis also that each api uh, itself abstract something and you don't need to worry about its internal uh, details and we take an example of a similar uh, api much simpler api rather than something like this uh, so if you consider uh, apis like uh, mem copy mem set uh, you can do you can do a man page so when you do a man page of mem set you can see here you don't need to worry about what really the api internally been implemented you just see it says that what api does and it says what are its uh, arguments and uh, its written values and any such uh, error cases then what it may written and stuff like that so this itself is an abstraction this is the reason we use apis and uh, whenever you compare this with this kind of a code it really defeats the purpose <laughs> so if you see somewhere over here what it really means no one can easily decrypt versus you compare something like this so if you see mem set it is very clear you are setting you are taking a, a buffer which is void star fs and then it is uh, you know setting a specific uh, byte or a character it is taking int c and then for how many bytes so 
it is very straight forward the api does what it says where it abstracts all the internal stuff and you as a consumer of memset you can just take this and then use it in your purposes uh, it is very clear you don't need to worry about its uh, internal implementation it just takes three arguments and it does whatever it is supposed to do and it returns something and in case if it is uh, some error then it returns uh, some kind of null pointer or something or some error code and something stuff like that so this is the actual intent of using the ap so if you see again this example all other expressions defeats this purpose rather than that first example which has that purpose you have that function square of x which tells that you pass any value it does returns you know the square of x as simple as that you don't need to worry about how it has been implemented so if you are a consumer of this api it is just you know square of x is an api which you can use it reliably and if you see this example the confusion starts if you see this example it even gets worse and if you see this example it is no longer an api <laughs> so this is where you should understand you being a programmer focus on this you know maintainability of the code and the human readability of the code rather than writing your cryptic code expressing your talent in programming and you know making the code more vulnerable and you may get bugs and you need to use unnecessarily debuggers and everything without any reason so have this picture in mind whenever you want to be a software programmer start acquiring these skills and focus on writing simpler code which does that purpose rather than writing a cryptic code which also does that you know purpose or that requirement so the end objective is you are addressing that requirement and don't always assume that you are addressing some problem so the objective is you are addressing a requirement which is why you are writing the code so that you have a requirement and this code fulfills that purpose rather than using this as a tool to express your skills in coding and then complicating yourself and to address your complications you are using further debugging tools and then you know finding out the problems and then you know finding further the solutions for that so what is my objective is don't work hard to find solutions for the problems work hard to address the requirement keep that in the perspective as a programmer